I think um, you know working from within is the key. Where does Ayurveda align with the modern perspective on dry hair and brittle hair during winter season? If your dry hair is telling me something, I need to find it. So there is a deeper level of dosha imbalance because everything happens. What is Ayurveda's perspective on treating dry hair? Dry is always tackled with moisture. Moisturizing your body from within. Outside also there are some external remedies too. But inside the healing and the moisturization from inside is very very crucial. Any Ayurvedic hair care routine specifically for you know these winter issues? You need to understand that if you wash too much of your hair, you're gonna suffer more. More of the natural oils and the moisture, you're gonna take it off. Because the more you wash it, the more it's gonna get dry and the more frizzy it's gonna get. Welcome to Ayurveda and You. In today's podcast, we'll dive into the area of hair care routine, especially for the winter season through the lens of Ayurveda. We'll look at personalized hair care routines, especially by dosha type. Also look at how you can fix that dry, brittle hair in this winter season. And don't forget, till the end of the video, stay tuned with us because we're going to give out some generic tips that you can follow throughout the year. Today joining us is Dr. Kalpana Sehra, who has extensive training in fixing hair-related issues through the Ayurvedic practices. She's helped countless people fix their hair care issues, stop their hair fall, not only in winter season, but throughout the year. Today, she's going to help us understand why hair fall happens, especially in winter season, and what you can do to create a personalized hair care routine, especially for you. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment and share on our channel. Welcome Dr. Kalpana. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Dr. Kalpana, tell me why does hair fall happen in winter season? So our winters generally consist of Shishir Ritu and Hemant Ritu in which Vata is naturally aggravated. So Vata is one of the three bioenergies as we call. So Vata, Pitta and Kapha. So this season is mainly your Vata season. Your Vata is naturally on the high. Vata has a property that it is dry, it is rough. Mm -hmm. So naturally your skin, hair and everything inside you becomes a little rough, brittle. So your hair suffers a lot during the season. So uh, people who are naturally of Vata Prakriti or Vata Pitta Prakriti, they often see this problem more, usually more than other people. And why does Vata have these properties? Like is there a reason? I just want to understand what Vata Dosha really means. As I said, Vata is one of the three energies, right? So Vata is consisting of air and space. So air and space, these are all light. It is always of movement. It is rough. It is cold also. Mm. So our winters are always cold, right? So this naturally increases the Vata Dosha and this further causes this problem. But the same symptoms, you know, the hair fall, the, the uh, dryness, I not only notice this in winter season, but it also happens during rainy season. So what is the link between the two? That's correct. I think another season that our hair and skin suffers the most is in monsoon, right? Mm. So in rainy season, it's actually the time where your vata is the highest in your body. So that time also. So vata is the main culprit, I'll say, um, when we're speaking of rough hair, dry hair, split ends dry scalp also so vata is there in both the seasons and anything that is different you know because when somebody gets dry hair uh, they usually try to put on serums they try to oil their hair where does ayurveda align with the modern perspective on dry hair and brittle hair during winter season so in ayurveda we focus on the root cause of it if your dry hair is telling me something i need to find it so there is a deeper level of dosha imbalance because mm. everything happens because of some imbalance in our three dosha. So vata, pitta, kapha, if anything is there, we need to find it out. So Ayurveda always, um, you know, emphasizes on finding the cause, right? And also it um, emphasizes on internal nourishment as well. So we don't just, you know, rely on outer, some, some masks, some oil, some serums. Mm. It's a quick fix. But until we do the healing from inside, mm. until we balance the doshas from inside the body. So that's how Ayurveda generally, uh, you know, approaches this exactly. So explain this to me. You know, you mentioned Vata, Pitta, Kapha. These are three different doshas or bioenergies, like you said. So I am a Pitta body type but I still get really dry hair during winter and monsoon season. How would you explain that? 
So pitta is also one of the culprits when mixed with vata, it can really, really cause some hair issues. And especially if you have hair fall, if mm. you have uh, graying of hair, mm. pitta is really there. So in um, in your winter seasons, your agni is very nice, like it's very strong. And agni is somehow correlated with pitta. It's one of the properties. Mm. So pitta is always, uh, you know, in this season, it is a little higher mm. side. And if vata also comes in with the winter season, and you might have hair fall and split ends too. So uh, you might be more prone to it. But what would you recommend, uh, you know, as compared to modern treatments, like modern treatments would be like if you have dry hair, have a very nice conditioner, have a very nice, you know, oil, probably, you know, they've started recommending, you know, these oils that you can put for a little while or serums that you can leave in. Right. What is Ayurveda's perspective on treating dry hair? So dry is always tackled with moisture, mm. with sneha, as mm. we say. So moisturizing your body from within outside also there are some external remedies too but inside the healing and the moisturization from inside is very very crucial so vata is balanced with moisture so use of ghee use of nuts use of all the healthy fats if i say mm. so this is very very beneficial we need to uh, have the moisture from within mm. for it to reflect outside not only not, not only, only on the head yes that's can that can be a quick fix and that can be something that is really helpful but if you're looking for a long term solution i think um, you know working from within is the key so you're saying that you know fix this root cause from within rather than only oiling your hair Yes. Uh, that is going to fix this dry hair exactly. issue. Exactly. But tell me this, you know, vata, pitta, kapha, is there a different uh, treatment for different body types? Yes. So, um, vata, pitta and kapha people will have different kinds of hair and scalp issues. So, vata people will have more of dry hair, brittle hair and also some scaling at some points. Yeah. Pitta people generally suffer with scalp irritation, some pimples and uh, grey hair, hair fall a lot. And kapha people, uh, although they have very uh, thick and luscious hair, but that can also in winters, the greasiness can increase and it can cause dandruff. So the care accordingly changes for every uh, prakriti person. So if you know your prakriti, you know your hair, Vata people needs to take care of it differently. Vata hair needs a lot of love. It needs a lot of moisture. It okay. needs oil. It needs healthy fats from within and from outside, of course. Okay. Pitta people need something that is cooling mm. and also uh, very mild in nature. And that's, you know, something pitta pacifying, very cooling in nature. So not very sharp. Not very sharp. Because so that's could you further. give explanation in each type? You know, what do Vata people, what is the ideal food or diet that they should have? Yes, so vata is dry, cold, rough. We need to work opposite of that. So we need something that is full of healthy fats, full of healthy oils. So a lot of uh, avocados, if you can include in your diet, a lot of nuts, a lot of oil, flax seeds. All this uh, is going to be very helpful. And also always warm and grounding foods. That's mm. really going to be, you know, pacifying your vata dosha. So adding a, uh, lots of ginger, Ajwain and all those vata pacifying ingredients in your food, it's really going to help. And for pitta people, you need a cooling um, everything, pitta pacifying. So neem, if you have neem in your oil, so neem oil also keeps the infections and the inflammation away if you have scalp infections. So that's helpful for that. And coconut oil is the, um, is the best that works for pitta people. Coconut oil is, you know, by nature it is cool and yeah. light. So that is also helpful. And people with kapha, they need very gentle but also thorough cleaning of the scalp because the buildup mm. of everything, the natural lipids, the oil that you apply and everything, that needs to be cleaned off but gently, also preserving the natural, uh, natural moisture. But tell me this, so, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking that the way you're explaining it, Vata, people have a drier scalp. Yeah. Pitta people might have, you know, like in between sort of a scalp and kapha people might have a lot of oils yes. in their scalp. And you're saying that that needs to be gently cleansed. Yes. Uh, but what would be, uh, you've mentioned that coconut oil is really good for pitta and vata people should have grounding spices and grounding food and warm food. Uh, kapha people, what kind of oils and what kind of food should they eat? 
so kapha people as uh, gentle cleansing is there but food kapha pacifying food hmm. so ginger is supposed to be there there can uh, there can be chilies in there oh, uh, really? there can be you know mild purgatives and can also be used according to it and if we speak of oils we need very uh, low density oils hmm. so jojoba oil is one of it almond oil is very good and uh, black seed oil that mm. is also very nice and you can just apply a bit of mustard oil for with it mm. because mustard is kapha pacifying by nature so kapha people can use that so all of these oils are we supposed to apply it or are we supposed to eat them you can do both so for coconut oil you can have it um, you know first thing in the morning you can have it and for kapha people black seed oil can be taken in the morning like a teaspoonful of that and it should be of edible grade i think you should just make sure that whatever oil you are getting it should be of edible grade hmm. so uh, applying is as much as important as you know having it so applying it very gently in circular motions and a little warm so it just increases the absorption value of it hmm. so applying it in circular motions very mildly do just don't go for the you know aggressive chumpy don't do that no oh. be very mild with it yes. for all body types all body types all body types yes. so tell me this uh, dr kalpana that you know you mentioned diet mm -hmm. is one and oiling your hair is one of the ways that we can actually fix the root cause yes. any other thing in ayurveda like you know any herbs that specifically focus on the winter season hair fall yes so uh, bhringraj is the king of herbs when we speak of uh, we speak of hair care so bhringraj is one Mm -hmm. that you should include uh, either in the form of uh, you know oil application or taking it internally as a medicine another thing is brahmi mm -hmm. so brahmi it is it it miles down everything it is good for uh, growth and another one that i personally love that is amla mm -hmm. amla has a it is very rich in vitamin c and vitamin c is the production uh, you know uh, responsible for the production of antioxidants it's a very rich source of antioxidant it promotes collagen also so your scalp is also very healthy mm. so amla is something that you can use throughout the year but in winters i'll suggest uh, more of uh, you know bring raj more of brahmi and uh, a lot of you know grounding vata pacifying oils so explain this to me how does bring raj and brahmi you know what in terms of vata pitta and kapha do they help with the dryness do they help with uh, you know the warming what do they really help with so um, like bring raj i said it has a lot of uh, components that have helped in also gray hairs mm. uh, hair falls split ends because it's in a oil base they mm. are generally made in a base of sesame oil yeah. so the property of sesame it is very light and it incorporates everything inside it so mm. that moisturizes the hair your uh, scalp also but the bringraj in it really promotes the hair growth really hair promotes growth. your uh, scalp health so something like rosemary you know people yes. are using rosemary a lot these days yes, yes. bringraj is kind of doing the same job yes kind of same but i'll say rosemary is uh, quite you know getting popular now and it's also very lighter mm. if you apply it as, a, as an essential oil it does not show too much on your hair mm. um, but at the same time it's working on your scalp yes that's yes. true but you know i i'm trying to understand that diet herbs uh, lifestyle and you know how you take care of your hair is there any ayurvedic hair care routine that you can suggest specifically for you know these winter issues yes so we have a bunch of do's and don'ts how what you do in winters or not so if you know that you're of vata prakriti or pitta pra prakriti predominance so you need to understand that if you wash too much of your hair you're going to suffer more so mm. more of the natural oils and the moisture you're going to take it off mm. so first thing that you need to do is just wash your hair once a week for vata people because the more you wash it the more it's going to get dry and the more frizzy it's going to get wait did you just say once a week yes <laughs> okay <laughs> because i have never heard that mm. how are we going to manage uh, once a week washing because uh, you are doing the oiling once a week okay. i suggest and you can use the lighter oils in between also but vata people tend to absorb all that oil mm. very quickly and their scalp needs you know um, cleansing but not too much because we want to preserve the natural oils too okay of the scalp but if you have like a even to go to or you have a, you know you see that your scalp is getting really 
dry yeah. and uh, sorry if your scalp is getting really oily you mm. can wash your hair also okay. in between but so it's I not a strict rule it's not a strict rule but i'll say once a week is just the uh, right you know the amount for vata and pitta people for vata and pitta people and what about kapha people kapha people uh, they generally tend to get a lot of dandruff they tend to get the layers of you know the oils and the gunk and mm. everything so they can wash their hair two to three times a week that is just perfect okay yes so the next i will say is regular abhyanga of your head so mm. regular massages of your scalp because scalp is the root if you don't water it just like a plant your hair is going to dry out mm. so regular massages of your scalp with the specific oils that we spoke of uh, previously so that should be there don't care that uh, my hair is looking greasy or whatever but you know just once a week have a little you know spa day for yourself do that massage and you uh, nourish your ends too not just the scalp but the ends too and with the same oil with the same oil and the next thing that i say is uh, cleaning it with a perfect agent don't use those ha- harsh chemicals they're going to strip your natural oils they're going to make your hair even more uh, dry and frizzy so natural cleansers like shikakai like rita like uh, um, amla include that so natural scrubs and packs are very very nice okay. and make sure that you do a mask at least once a week so a very natural mask that you can make my personal favorite is with aloe vera okay. so aloe vera you take the gel out okay you just mash it with your hands and then you can add a little bit of almond oil mm. just a few drops okay. and also flax seed mm. flax seed is very good um source of omega 3 Yeah. it is very good when you eat it in you know for eating also in winter you a lot of um, dishes that we use in you know um, in winter season it consists of alsi so just boil a bit of alsi like 2 teaspoons of it boil it it becomes very jelly in gooey. nature very yeah. gooey you need that goo so that you you need to put in the mm. mask itself you apply it on your hair and you wash it off very gently with the cleanser and your hair is going to be amazing yeah but uh, you know i'm trying to understand uh, dr kalpana that you've mentioned that vata pitta people should not wash their hair more than once a week that's the ideal yes. and kapha people can still you know manage three times a week but with rita and shikha kai i've tried that yes. uh, it really doesn't take out the oil yes. <laughs> so what's your recommendation for those who have you know a really oily scalp uh, it get and they still have dry ends you could yeah. have an oily scalp and still have really you know brittle hair and dry ends how do you manage something like that so you need a stronger cleanser for it okay first thing is that you just don't do it like one time mm-hmm. you do double wash every time so focus more on scalp at mm-hmm. that time rather than your ends okay so you can moisturize your ends or you can apply a light jojoba a jojoba oil or mm-hmm. black seed oil on the ends just just to tame them and style them but focusing more on scalp and also you can use a gentle other cleanser that is more natural based more uh, with herbs i'll say i won't say you use something that is too foamy the mm. more foamy it is the more uh, oil it's going to strip off so you're saying not a lot of soap like sls uh, or something that yes, should not be there and sls free should be that like should be that, that. Yes. okay what is ayurveda's take on modern hair treatments modern hair treatment so there are a lot of things going on okay so if you have dry hair you have uh, um, you know brittle ends and all that you need they they do something like we have very commonly keratin also botox also every year new things are coming but uh, we need to focus more on the internal health because that's what's reflecting outside that's a quick fix but these are generally packed with chemicals that is giving you a quick fix for now but that's going to you know um, impact very badly on your hair so modern treatments like that are i'll say if you are of vata prakriti if your hair is on the brittle on the lighter side on the thinner side you should avoid it like plague hmm. just focus on your inner uh, balance of all the three doshas and i think your hair problem is going to be fixed about you know these treatments do you think they also affect your scalp and actually you know because i've seen a lot of research that these treatments whatever chemicals they're using they also enter your bloodstream and can cause kidney damage as well 
what is you know ayurveda's take on that if somebody were to go and get a hair treatment is there something counter to these hair treatments that ayurveda can provide so that you know you can detoxify as such yes so everything we are putting on our skin on our scalp on our hair it's somehow getting absorbed even yes. if it's getting absorbed like a percent of it but everything is getting absorbed and you know somehow affecting our uh, blood system or skin or our body itself so i have seen a lot of people getting allergic very severe allergic yes. reaction towards dyes that's true so the first thing that i tell people some people complain of i have a very chronic headache it's not going away mm. and i just look at their hair and they are using like very those box dyes mm. of low quality so i first thing that i say is just don't do that because that somehow is going inside you so the solution for it is for solution for everything that is there it's the detoxing your body so panchkarma is something that okay you did your treatment okay now that you feel okay it was not uh, good for me you can do regular panchkarmas so season wise panchkarmas so in winter season it is the time when your agni is very good your pitta is aggravated and at that time i think virechana is the uh, choice of panchkarma that we go through yeah if it's the uh, vasant ritu if it's the spring you can do the vamana mm. and the throughout the year um, based on your body constitution we can plan basti treatments also so those are medicated enemas so getting rid of all those toxins getting rid of all those you know um, toxins in your body from the either from hair products from eating out everything that that can be you know detoxified so bastis are the oil based enemas um, that are given from the uh, you know the anal root right? yes not just soil but a lot of other things uh it has ghee also it has other herbs in powder form also it has honey it has mm. a lot of other things but these animas are generally given through anal root it's supposed to cleanse your gut from within so as vata is one of the main culprits over here so basti is something that can you know it is called ardha chikitsa mm. ardha chikitsa half of the chikitsa half of the treatment is basti itself and it works on vata okay. so it is generally given um from the anal root to cleanse out your colon but it ju- doesn't just cleans it but it also provides the nourishment it also provides that vata pacifying drugs mm. over there because your pakwasha mm. your large intestine is the place of vata mm. so uh, when it directly approaches there your vata is pacified and that's how panchkarma uh, detoxes work mm. so you're saying that nourishing my colon uh, you know my my large intestine yes. can actually help with my dry hair issues exactly because that's the place of your vata dosha okay so uh, taking care of that also making sure that you are not constipated so mm-hmm. your good gut health is going to be reflected on your hair it's going to be reflected on your skin as well okay so taking care of the gut is as important as that like constipation is one of the signs that you mentioned is related to dryness in the body and eventually dryness in your hair yes what are some other signs that i should look out for that can tell me that it's a chronic problem yes uh, if you're speaking about scalp right so uh, if you see that your uh, your scalp is having those dry crust that is you know if you remove it it keeps on coming back mm. your scalp is uh, very reddish it's thick in nature and it's always itchy it can you know tell us a lot if you are going towards scalp psoriasis or eczema mm. that's when you need to get professional help from a vet there okay that time the remedies won't work as much because okay. we need to uh, take care of the deeper issues the deeper roots of it so okay. we need to balance all your doshas from a medical perspective that time so gut health is one that you said you know when we get basti we take care of our vata because it resides in the colon region what are some other symptoms that can correlate directly to dry hair and can make me understand you know this dry hair is not only a winter season problem but it is actually a chronic problem and some dosha is vitiating inside yes like we uh, spoke before so your dry scalp and your dry hair is telling a lot about your body yeah so if i if i notice things like you have joint pain also if i feel if i see there is anxiety issue also you have a very very chronic stiffness there is uh, joint pains from now and then so it tells there is a deeper vata level you know dushti is there some uh, imbalances there from before i have seen in my patients 
दे कम हेयर फॉर अ वेरी वेरी माइल्ड प्रॉब्लम लाइक ओके आई हैव हेयर फॉल बिकॉज दिस इज समथिंग दैट पीपल एक्चुअली रियली केयर अबाउट माई हेयर इज नॉट लुकिंग नाइस माई आई हैव यू हेयर फॉल अ लॉट सो आई ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट एंड आई हैव सीन पीपल दे हैव अदर डीपर एंड क्रॉनिक वाता इम्बैलेंस इज ऑल्सो सो वाता इम्बैलेंस इज आई आस्क अबाउट देर गट हेल्थ ऑल्सो इफ दे आर कॉन्स्टिपेटेड इफ दे हैव यू नो डायट लाइक um they are eating a lot of lentils that are you know not split if they are having very vata aggravating lifestyle i'll ask i'll ask that so taking care of that we need to address the deeper vata imbalances all right is there a difference between men and women when you you know recommend them some changes yes because the reasons why they have hair fall or hair issues are different for women generally it is hormonal Mm. so during menopause for pcos they have a lot of dry hair lot of uh, hair fall gray hair also so for women it's almost hormonal so we need to take care of their hormones as well for uh, men it is generally lifestyle there is often smoking involved there is often late nights involved so focusing both are different and the care is also different okay so women we focus more on hormonal health in uh, moisturizing and correcting generally their balance uh, their doshas actually hmm. so, uh, they are women are more, most concerned about their you know if they have strength if they have long hair if they have shiny hair yes. for uh, men they generally you know they is, um, they want scalp health basically hmm. so we focus more on scalp health and how do you do that like are there any herbs for specifically for women which can really help with dry hair or hair fall yes if a, if a person if a woman is going through menopause so we need to balance her hormones as well mm. so that safe transition from menopause uh, to that can be given they can be given shatavari they can okay. be given ashwagandha they are very good in terms of balancing their pitta kapha and vata three of them all three they are antioxidant in nature they are adaptogenic also and very nourishing basically so that vata that tends to rise when they are um, transitioning to menopause that vata is pacified with, with these drugs so another thing that i tell them is to take ghee in the morning on empty stomach mm. so uh, they are going to have wrinkles very late in their life because uh, that's going to moisturize your uh, skin hair your gut so everything will be um, in balance if you are taking ghee in the morning just a tablespoon of it in the morning so shatavari as grit also shatavari grit can be taken you know right before you feel that you're going into menopause you can start that as soon as possible you can start it in um, any stage of your life but i'll say the moment you start your 40s it should be a very you know important part of your routine so morning routine of that so for men we focus on um, their you know hair fall because they have those male ball pattern they it start as soon as 35 in some people yes. so taking care of that we need pitta pacifying things also so they mm. need to have very cooling they can use brahmi that's very cooling coconut oil ashwagandha in some form either um, in the form of a mask either in the form of a tablet or a churna that they can take regularly but i suggest this also should be taken according to a weather always after consultation but this is something uh, that they can do at home as well so according to you dr kalpana what would be an ideal hair care routine for anyone and everyone yes yeah, so the ideal routine should include regular oiling of your head even if your vata pitta kapha you need that scalp nourishment mm. so the first will be oiling your hair at least once a week people like vata can do twice or thrice also according to your scalp health and the second will be cleansing it very nicely with natural products that should be chemical free paraben and sls free third uh, is you need to hydrate your body a lot because in winters our hydration is uh, you know very low we are not drinking water we are not drinking because that's uh, gets very cold so your moisture from within comes from that so drinking a lot of water is a very underrated i will say uh, advice that i can give so hydrating very nicely third that i will say is practicing regular pranayama and yoga so because vata is linked with your uh, anxiety also sometimes mm. so if you are balanced from hair from your head your scalp is going to be uh, better so practicing specific yogasan like 
Shirsasan, for example. Shirsasan in that you are, um, you know, uh, doing a headstand. Mm. So in that way, all the blood is coming and rushing to your scalp. Mm. Sometimes the thing is the poor blood circulation because we are always standing upright. Yeah. And from gravity, the most circulation is in your um, feet instead of your head. Mm. So the increasing the circulation to your head is one thing. So practicing that, learning that, of course, in guidance is going to be very good. And one tip that I want to give is do not wash your hair with very hot water. Hot water is going to make it even more dry, more brittle, and it's going to make your scalp even, um, you know, drier. Mm. It can cause inflammation also sometimes. And in Ayurveda also, it has been told that you should wash your head with very warm body temperature water the rest of the body can be uh, you know washed with a slightly warmer slightly hotter water but your head should be cleansed with very warm lukewarm water so in whenever winters especially the north indian winters they are very cruel it is very uh, yeah. very cold in here so people tend to take very hot baths mm. so avoid that at all costs and the last one I'll say is what you eat is what you reflect. It's going to be reflected in your skin. It's going to be reflected in your hair. So a lot of nuts, seeds, oils and ghee. Mm. Ghee is very important. So including that in your body and at in winters, your agni is very good. You can digest all of it. So don't say no to all those pinnies, laddus. Don't, that. Uh, don't do that. They are very nourishing, full of these nuts and good fats. So taking that is uh, really going to take care of your uh, skin and hair both. Yeah. So we shouldn't say no to mithai during winter time. No. Actually, you can digest it well. That's nice. <laughs> Tell me also this. I've heard that the technique called nasya yes. or nasal oiling can also help nourish your scalp quite a lot. Is that true? Yes. So, Nasya is one of the panch karma told by Charaka. Mm. Right? So, in this nasal, they say Nasha Sirso Dwara. Mm. Yani ki, Nasa, your nostrils, your nose is the door towards your head. So, basically, we need to focus on our head. So, instilling drops of oil, suitable oil, from your nose can really reach towards your scalp and nourish from inside. So nasa is something that we can, the uh, variation of nasa is different that we can do at home. We can do pratimash nasa, that is using a very small quantity of oil, mm. like two drops or four drops at home. Mm. And nasa is also told as one of the part of your dincharya. So even if you don't have hair problems, even if it's not winter, you can do that any time of the year. But uh, you should always see that uh, you don't have fever, you don't have a stuffy nose. At that time, you should avoid it. But other times, Nasa can be uh, is something that is very easy and can be incorporated in your daily lifestyle. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. But tell me this, that is Nasya, you know, can we do it? What kind of oil should one do it with? If you don't have anything, use cow ghee. Okay. Right. So, a very authentic, natural, organic cow ghee. Mm -hmm. Two to four drops is just enough. Mm. And almond oil you can use. That is something that is there in your home all the time. And if you want to go towards more uh, Ayurveda, Anu Tail is a good option that is well tolerated between individuals. So you can use that. And this, all of this can be done at home. At home. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalpana. I think this was a brilliant conversation. Hair fall is not something that is only specific to winter season. We've noticed that rainy season may be hair fall. Hota hai. And now we know the root cause of that is vata aggravation. Vata is that bioenergy or bio force which carries forward with air and the space element. That means it is very light, drying, rough in nature. And that is why your hair also reflects that. To pacify Vata, what she recommended us is that we should always incorporate a lot of fats, a lot of oils in our diet. The ideal one being a sesame oil base for anything and everything. Not only applying oil, but also actually ingesting these oils can actually make a big impact. If you want to know what is the real root cause of your dry hair, it's not entirely deficiencies, it's just dryness in your bodies which can be taken care of by panchkarma therapies like basti as well. 
डॉक्टर कल्पना ऑल्सो हेल्प डस अंडरस्टैंड दैट वाता एंड पिता लोगों को प्लीज बहुत ज़्यादा हेड वॉश नहीं करना चाहिए ड्यूरिंग द वीक रैदर इट्स फॉर कफा पीपल हु कैन अफोर्ड टू क्लेंस देयर हेयर एंड यू नो गेट द गंक आउट एट लीस्ट टू टू थ्री थ्री टाइम्स अ वीक विच आई थॉट वॉज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज आई वॉश माई हेड थ्री टाइम्स अ वीक विच इज़ क्वाइट रफ ऑन माई स्कैल इज समथिंग दैट आई अंडरस्टूड एनी वे हेयरफॉल का मेन रीजन वाई हेयरफॉल रियली अकर्स इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड थ्रू द लेंस ऑफ आयुर्वेदा एंड आई थिंक डॉक्टर कल्पना शेड अ लॉड ऑफ लाइट इन गेटिंग अस द बेस्ट हेयर केयर रूटीन्स अकॉर्डिंग टू योर बॉडी टाइप मेक श्योर यू सब्सक्राइब टू अवर चैनल एंड कॉमेंट लाइक एंड शेयर आर वीडियोज एंड इफ देर आर एनी फीडबैक फील फ्री टू पुट डाउन इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन दिस इज योर होस्ट डॉक्टर रनी वोरा साइनिंग ऑफ ऑफ आयुर्वेदा एंड यू जय गुरुदेव